How plasticity contributes in a living animal to a learned behavior is a fundamental question in neuroscience. Our group used the Nematode C. elegans to ask how individual neurons change to guide a learned behavioral preference. C. elegans is transparent and we can label individual neurons with reporters that allow us to visualize the activity of specific neurons in live behaving animals, as seen in this video. This way we can see exactly how the neurons are responding to sensation and how they're processing that sensation after learning. C. elegans like us can learn and it can be trained to prefer a temperature. In this video, the tracks are shown for worms migrating in a thermal gradient. These animals were trained to prefer colder temperatures and when put in a gradient, they migrate to the left, which is the cold side. In just a few hours, worms can be retrained to like warmer temperatures. Those animals migrate on the exact same gradient now towards the right side, which is the warmer side. To perform this behavior, animals have to know two things which direction they're moving on the gradient and whether that is the correct direction. So we asked, what changes happen in individual cells that allow the animals to perform this learned behavioral preference? Remarkably, we found that the sensory cell was capable of integrating two different forms of plasticity, sensory adaptation and presynaptic plasticity, to actuate this behavior. Sensory adaptation allows the sensory cell to flexibly respond to changes in temperature, telling the animal if it is moving towards the cold or the warm side. For instance, in the worm shown here, we've labeled the sensory neuron to see how it responds to temperature. The sensory cell does not respond to absolute temperatures. Instead, it quickly adapts to an experienced temperature and then responds if that temperature changes, telling the animal if it is getting colder or warmer as compared to a temperature it recently experienced. We think the sensory adaptation serves as a compass telling the animal which way it is moving in the temperature gradient, but it does not carry information of whether that is the preferred direction based on the training. Instead, training the animals to prefer a temperature alters whether this signal is passed downstream to the postsynaptic partner, and that is regulated by presynaptic plasticity. This picture shows the sensory neuron we have been discussing, pseudocolored in green, and its only known postsynaptic partner which we can also label with single cell markers pseudocolored in blue. The synapses are labeled in white. We found that plasticity in the connections between these two neurons control which direction the animal travels, and that this is regulated in the sensory neuron at its presynaptic sites. Here we are imaging activity in the postsynaptic neuron of animals experiencing warming ramps. Briefly, we found that if animals were trained to like warmer temperatures, when the sensory cells respond to warming, that signal is more likely to be transmitted to the postsynaptic neuron. If, on the other hand, animals are trained to prefer colder temperatures, that signal is less likely to be transmitted to the postsynaptic neuron. This indicates that presynaptic plasticity acts as an information gate, which, based on the previous learned preference of the animal, controls how the animal acts on the temperature information it's receiving from the presynaptic cell. For example, in wild-type animals trained to like colder temperatures, we see very few responses in the postsynaptic cell. But if we rewire the circuit with gap junctions and bypass the presynaptic plasticity mechanism, as shown in this video, even when animals were trained to like colder temperatures, we can essentially synthetically rewire the animal to, to, to see now responses in the postsynaptic neuron, which are more frequent and also rewire the preference of the animals. Now these animals prefer to go to the warmth, although they were trained to like to go to the cold. So in summary, we show that a single sensory neuron performs two different information processing roles that build into a single cell logic system that achieves two goals. It both extracts directional signal and it assigns a preference based on an experience.